Hello, Temple friends, and welcome to TempleCast, episode 44. I'm Jim Giannotti, pastor of Temple United Methodist Church in North Coventry Township, Pennsylvania. We created this podcast to help us get through the coronavirus lockdowns of 2020 together, and now we are coming to the end of that long period of quarantine. Two days from now, Chester County in southeastern PA, along with several neighboring counties, will enter what is known as the green phase of our gradual reopening. This phase opens up more or loosens its level of restrictions much more than the other phases that came before. I know I am excited about this, but I am also cautious. I urgently remind you, my friends, because I care about all of our temple community, members and friends far and near, that we are still in the midst of a global pandemic. It is something that none of us has seen before in our lives and hopefully we'll never see again. People are still getting sick and people are still dying. As of this writing, we are still seeing around 1,000 deaths per day in the U.S. alone. So please, be mindful of the health and safety of those around you as well as your own. Today we'll hear readings and prayer for Wednesday, June 24th, beginning with this prayer, which is taken from a book by Paul Wesley Chilcote called A Life-Shaping Prayer. Gracious Lord, you fully know and fully love all you have created. Grant me power to comprehend the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that I might be immersed and lost in your love. Amen. And now we'll hear a selection from Psalm 50. We'll hear verses 7 through 24. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, O Israel, for I am God, your God. I will not reprove you for your sacrifices, for your burnt offerings are always before me. I will take no bull out of your house, nor he goat out of your folds. For all the beasts of the forests are mine, the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains and the insect of the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine and all that fills it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and fulfill your vows to God Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall honor me. But to the wicked, says God, why do you recite my statutes and take my covenant upon your lips? Since you refuse to be disciplined and have cast my words behind you, when you saw a thief, you made friends with him and you threw in your lot with adulterers. You have loosed your lips for evil and harnessed your tongue to deceit. You sit and speak evil of your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and should I keep silence? Do you think that I am even such a one as yourself? But no, I must reprove you and set before your eyes the things that you have done. You that forget God, consider this well lest I tear you apart, and there is none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, and to those who keep my way will I show the salvation of God. And next we'll hear from the book of the prophet Malachi, from chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, 
against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, have not perished. And here is a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Glorious and redeeming God, give us hearts to praise you all our days and wills to reject the world's deceits, that we may bind the evils of our age and proclaim the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, a very short reading from the Gospel of Matthew from chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Jesus is speaking, and he says, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. You're driving. Let's say you're heading to a baseball game. You are following some directions that have been given to you by, I don't know, your best friend, your mom or dad, your spouse. Pick any very important person in your life. They gave you these directions and you're happily driving to the baseball stadium. And then you come to a fork in the road. You look at the sheet of directions that your friend gave you. They even drew a crude map. But neither the list of street names and directions nor the map includes this fork in the road. To the left, the road is a crude single lane affair riddled with potholes after those two big storms of recent weeks. To the right, it's a four lane highway and newly paved. You believe that the newly paved road is probably the way to the baseball game and even if it's not, at least the ride will be smooth. Fortunately, there happens to be a guy standing at the fork in the road. He looks a little out of place, what with that brilliant white robe, the long hair and the beard, not to mention the sign he's holding which says, repent. But hey, it's getting toward game time and you're not too proud to ask directions, so you pull up to the guy in the tunic and say, which road will lead us to the baseball stadium? The man says, ah, there you are. I was sent to guide you, follow me. And he starts walking down the left fork, but suddenly you're not sure you can trust him. So you ask, how do I know I can trust you? He simply says, follow me, and keeps on walking. You say, but this road looks better. Wouldn't the baseball stadium be this way? The man says, that road looks nice and lots of people choose it for that reason, but it's subject to frequent rock slides and it leads to a sharp 1,000 foot cliff into an icy cascading torrent filled with carnivorous beasts the size of houses. You think he might be trying to trick you. Maybe he's going to kidnap you and brainwash you if you follow him. But the road to the right looks so nice and smooth to drive on. Besides, if there is a cliff, you'll be able to stop before you fall off of it because you are an excellent driver, better than the idiots you passed on your way here. You get out of your car and peer down both roads. The man is still walking down the crude, pothole-filled left fork. You squint your eyes looking for the sharp drop-off. While you're standing there considering, several cars approach. All at high rates of speed and without even slowing down, they head down the wide highway to the right. Suddenly, boulders come cascading down the hillside, smashing two of the three cars flat. The third car, though, manages to steer around them and drives off into the distance until you can no longer see it. You look back down the road to the left. There is a bend in that road, and the man in white is about to disappear around it and into some trees. Before he does, though, he turns around again and shouts, Follow me! The left fork looks like it might be difficult to follow. But you've just seen what happened to two out of the three cars that chose the right fork. And as for the third car, so far the warning from the man in white has proved 100% accurate. Even if you could avoid the rocks, there's still the cliff he talked about. And even if by your excellent driving skills, you managed to stop short of that cliff, where would that leave you? There is every reason to believe that the right fork is a road to nowhere at best and a ticket to destruction at worst. What would you do? 
There are so many lanes on the road to destruction. Not just the obvious ones like the adultery lane or the murder lane or the theft lane. There are other lanes too, like the oppressing workers in their wages lane and the thrusting aside the alien lane, among others. Those lead to the same place, though all those lanes are pretty smooth and can even seem pleasant to drive on in a nice big luxury vehicle that's been engineered not to transmit the occasional bump. The other road really has nothing to commend it. It looks like a challenging drive. About the only things going for it are the promise that it leads to life and not destruction, and the winsome dude in white who says follow me but who you're not sure you want to trust. Yet, I submit that the choice isn't a hard one to make. Though, according to Jesus, few make that one. It's not hard to see which road to choose. Or, it shouldn't be. Thank you for listening. I pray you will follow Jesus in the way that he shows you. We'll be back with you on Friday. Until then, grace and peace to all.